Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to modify the physics components of an entity using the entity component system. In this video we're going to be using purely the entity component system to modify the physics velocity of a sphere and I'm going to show you how we can control it to make it roll around the stage. If you found this video helpful I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also you might be interested in the video that I recently made where I recreated the classic Unity Rollerball tutorial using dots and ECS. That video does a good job at showing you the basics of how to create a project using dots and ECS and it can show you how the concepts of this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data oriented technology stack and entity component system. Of course if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and if you do want to download the project files featured in today's video make sure you use the link right down in the description. All right, so here I am over in Unity version 2019.3. And of course, because Dots is still in the preview phases at the time of recording, I do have these preview packages enabled. So be sure to enable those if applicable. Now, as far as the scene goes, I basically just have a plane, which just has the mesh collider component and the convert to entity component. And then I have this sphere here with a kind of a little basketball skin on it. And instead of using the regular collider and rigid body components, I've opted to use the physics body and physics shape components. Once again, when you have the convert to entity component on a game object, the rigid body and collider components are automatically converted into physics body and physics shape components. But just to show that you can do it both ways, I've done it this way here today. And so just real quickly to show you the physics interactions that we have going in the scene by default, when we hit the play button here, you'll see that the sphere just drops right down and lands on the plane, just like that. So now in my scripts folder, I have some subfolders for data components and systems. So we'll just go ahead and start by creating the data component we need. So we'll just create a new data component which we can just call physics move data just like that so I'll go ahead and open up that script here and we can just clear out everything within here and the only library that we're going to need is we'll do using unity dot entities so here we're going to be creating a public struct which of course is just called physics move data and here we're going to be implementing the interface for I component data and within here we're just going to need one public float variable for the move speed and so this is our simple data component this is all we really need is we just need to read in the move speed from this the one last thing that we of course need to do is add the generate authoring component tag so this will allow us to apply this data component to our game object over in unity so when we go to the sphere here we can just drag on this physics move data and we can just go ahead and set a default value for the move speed of say five so now that we have our component created we'll just need to go ahead and create a system for it so in our system subfolder we'll just create a new C sharp script which we can call the physics move system. And so here we do need to include a few more libraries. So we're gonna be using unity.entities, unity.jobs, unity.mathematics, and unity.physics. Now within our public class here, we can just go ahead and clear out these start and update functions because we do not need those. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to be inheriting from the job component system. So you'll see when we do that, we get this red line under the physics move system. So we can just click on that and hit alt enter and enter again. And it will just go ahead and implement this on update function here. So this on update function is very similar to the regular update function where it executes the code within here every single frame. And the first thing that we're going to need a reference to is a float, which we'll call delta time. And we'll set this equal to time dot delta time and the reason we're doing this is because we're about to implement a lambda expression and we can't grab time dot delta time from within that lambda expression and one other thing we'll need a reference to is a float to which we'll call cur input and so we'll set this equal to a new float to passing in input dot get axis horizontal and input dot get axis vertical so this basically just gets the horizontal and vertical input and stores it in this float2 variable here. The float2 variable is very similar to a vector2, however, it doesn't have as many functions and things like that. So it's a little bit more lightweight and it's very nice to use for ECS. Now here we'll create our Lambda expression. So we're going to be doing an entities dot for each. And then here we'll do a second set of parentheses. And this is where we define the data components that we need access to. So we're gonna be doing a ref 
physics velocity, which we can just call VEL. And then we're gonna do an in keyword for our physics movement data, which we can just call move data. And after this first set of parentheses, we're gonna do an equal sign and an arrow, followed by an open and close curly braces. And then at the end, we'll do a semicolon. And then now we can just kind of uh, put these all on their own lines here, just like that. So it's a little bit easier to read. And if you aren't familiar with these Lambda expressions, basically what this means is we're gonna iterate through all the entities that have a physics velocity and a physics move data component associated with them. And this ref keyword basically means that we can read from as well as write to this physics velocity component. And the in keyword means that we can only read from the move data component. So now within here is where we actually do our physics operations. So we'll get another float to variable, which we can call new VEL, and we can set this equal to VEL dot linear dot X Z. So basically what this means is we're setting up this new VEL variable, and we're gonna set this equal to the current linear physics velocity in the X and Z directions. And we're only getting X and Z because we're basically just moving this sphere around on the 2D plane, and we're only gonna be needing to move in the X and Z directions. So next we can modify this new VEL. So we'll do new VEL plus equals our current input multiplied by our move data dot move speed multiplied by delta time. And then the last thing that we need to do is just apply this new velocity to our current velocity. So we'll say VEL dot linear dot XZ is equal to new VEL, just like that. So basically we're just getting the current linear velocity and then we're gonna add in our movement multiplied by our move speed multiplied by time dot delta time. And then we're just gonna set that back to our current velocity. And then the next thing that we need to do here is after this parentheses, we're just gonna do a dot run to run this on the main thread. And you'll see that the on update function is still uh, giving an error here. So all we just need to do here is just return default. So we can go ahead and save that. And now we'll head back over to Unity and let this compile. So now when we hit the play button, you'll see that the sphere drops down to the floor just like that. And now we can use the W, A, S, and D keys because that's uh, the defaults for the horizontal and vertical axes to actually roll the sphere around on the plane just like this. Now, if you watched the video where I showed you how to modify the translation and rotation components, you'll remember that on the plane, I attached the data component to the plane. So I'm gonna do that right now. And so here we can set a move speed of uh, 2.5, we'll make it half the speed. And so now when we hit play, okay, the sphere is gonna drop right onto the plane again. And now when we use the W, A, S, and D keys, you'll see that the plane doesn't move anywhere. And the reason for that is because we're gonna be iterating this system on anything with a with both the movement data component as well as a physics velocity component. Now in this case, although this plane has the movement data, it does not have a physics velocity component. That physics velocity component comes when we add a physics body. So we can just add a physics body on there. And in this case, because it's not moving or anything, we're just gonna do a kinematic body. And so we can hit play and that means it's not gonna be affected by gravity or anything like that. So now when we use the W, A, S, and D keys, you'll see that not only is the ball moving around, but the plane is moving around as well. So that's pretty neat. Bye bye. And so that is how you can modify the physics component of an entity using the entity component system. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data oriented technology stack and Unity entity component system. Don't forget to watch my Unity Rollerball tutorial so you can see how the concepts in this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. And of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.